humble mind. One thing I've not really told you guys about yet is that out of every video game franchise out there, the one I'm pretty sure I've put the most hours into is Super Smash Bros. The game in this series that I played the most of was Smash Bros for Wii U because its online play was so good. Its online component is honestly still better than Smash Ultimates in my opinion. I would routinely be late or completely miss college classes because of Smash Bros for Wii U. But over the years, I've played all of them. I didn't have access to GameCube games until many years after its heyday, so Melee I actually have the least amount of time in. Plus, Ness sucks in that game, so it wasn't really my favorite. But across Smash 64, Brawl, Smash for Wii U, 3DS, and Smash Ultimate, I easily have thousands and thousands of hours in Smash Brothers, which isn't necessarily something to be proud of. I haven't played Smash in a long time though since I've shifted more towards single player games, but I still have a deep love for the series and I'm sure I'll be there day one for a future installment. So you can probably imagine my excitement when I happened across The Klein's Drops, this new indie platformer that emphasized Super Smash Bros. as one of its biggest inspirations. Watching the teaser footage that the devs shared over the last couple of months leading up to its release, I got really excited because it reminded me of Brawl's Subspace Emissary. In case you're not aware, this was a full-on campaign mode where you started as Kirby and tried to save all the other Smash Bros. characters in your efforts to build a team and fight the powerful Taboo. It was a really ambitious mode to appear in Super Smash Bros. history, and unfortunately nothing quite like it ever came out again in the series. Now, normally I save the emotional elements of my videos for the ending, but to be honest, a lot of you don't stick around to the back half of my videos, which is okay, but you're missing out. Plus, I feel like I have to share this first because it greatly informed my experience with the Klein's Drops. I spent a great majority of those many hours playing Smash Brothers with my younger brother Devin. We started together on Smash 64, jumped to Brawl together, jumped backwards to Melee together for a time, and he was always invited over for Smash Wii U when I was in college, and we played some Ultimate together as well. We were an unstoppable force in 2v2s because we had played together for so long and had that sibling instinct, so we pretty much just always bounced off of one another and could communicate with one another just through our actions. And as I've mentioned before in a previous video, my brother passed away unexpectedly in February of this year. And so there are a lot of times where I'll be playing a game or doing something rather innocuous, but it just causes this well of emotion because it stirs up memories of him. My brother and I played through the Subspace Emissary together, and I couldn't help but think how much he probably would have enjoyed Decline's Drops when I was looking at this game. I was always showing him the latest and greatest indies, and I never knew what his reaction would be, but this one I had a really good feeling about. So since he's not here, for the first time since his passing, I brought out my brother's Luigi-themed Smash controller so that we could play this game together. And I set up the keybinds so that we can make it as much like Smash, as much like those old times, as possible. And so you might be thinking, there's a lot of unnecessary pressure that I was putting on this game. A Wario Land-esque platformer with Smash Bros fighting elements sounds like the perfect game for me, but if you're going to make those kinds of comparisons, the gameplay better be tight and you better deliver. And I was playing this not just for myself, but for my brother too. Imagine if I brought my brother's controller out of retirement and this thing sucked or even worse was just okay. Well, I'm happy to say that Decline's Drops, in my mind, is the indie answer to Smash Bros. Subspace Emissary. And honestly, it improves upon that original concept in just about every way and becomes its own thing entirely. Not only that, but it seamlessly integrates gameplay elements from Donkey Kong Country, Sonic Advance, and Wario Land, on top of its deeply ingrained Smash Bros. DNA. I mean, the main character Globule can freaking wave dash. She has all kinds of special moves, a double jump with the up B serving as her third jump, shielding and dodge rolls act just like they do in Smash, except if you hit the shield at the right time, right when an enemy swings at you, she'll do a Marth style counter on an opponent. She has tilts, smash attacks, and even aerials like up air, bears, and fairs. She also has this really cool Wario Land meets Sonic the Hedgehog dash attack that you can unleash after running for a bit. And to top it all off, it has a really fun Kirby, Yoshi's Island type of visual aesthetic that I really enjoy, and a wonderfully cozy jazz soundtrack. As a bass player myself, I have to say that the bass lines on this thing especially really make me happy. And the way that the composer was able to weave in the game's main motif throughout many of its tracks is expertly done.
This game, at its heart, is a precision platformer that has a lot in common with the Rayman series, I would say as well, so you need to be careful. It's really easy to lose some health in this game. It's a good thing that you can take some hits and that you get routine mid-level checkpoints and health drops often. In the early gameplay that I captured here, which by the way mostly only focuses on the first two chapters, which is about 10 levels or so, so that I'm not giving you too many spoilers, you can see that I'm playing this game like I'm playing 1v1 Fox only on Final Destination because I was just too hyped to have that smash-like movement, but you'll probably perform a lot better if you were more careful than I was here. As I got into the later chapters, I chilled out a little bit more and did a lot better. In other words, you don't need to be a Smash Bros player to play through this game, but it certainly helps at times, especially in the boss battles. DD isn't a metroidvania per se, but you may find yourself backtracking every now and then or coming back to levels if you're a collectathon completionist, because there are a lot of secrets that you may miss on your first run through. Collecting everything requires a lot of attention to detail and creativity on your part. If I'm being honest, I would recommend seeking out the secrets as you can, but don't try to 100% every single level and get bogged down in that. I would suggest running through the story instead and then go back to those earlier levels with your newfound experience if you're wanting to get everything later. There's a lot of visual variety between the levels too, and I don't want to spoil anything, but as you get further into the game starting in the third world, there are also a lot of new gameplay mechanics thrown at you as well. I think all of them will feel intuitive to anyone who's played a bunch of platformers. All of the enemies have distinct strategies to try to fight you, and there are times where you'll be forced into a battle with all of them at once to show off what you can do. And then we have the boss fights. Oh my gosh, the boss fights. I just want to say that while many of them I have beaten on my first try, I have come out of these boss battles time and time again with just one hit point left. It's absolutely riveting, and while difficult, the difficulty feels fair. I do have a couple small qualms with the game, all nitpicky stuff, so I'll throw those out there really quick so that you're aware. Selfishly, I think it would be really cool to have a Smash Bros controller layout or preset in the control options. That way I could use my C-Stick to do smashes and have both triggers accessible for shielding and rolling and things like that. These little flying guys sometimes seem like they have a little too much priority with their attacks as they can often go straight through your specials with their dive, which I thought was a little odd. Sometimes I found myself wishing I had more of an opportunity to cancel my actions so that I could shield or roll a little easier, but I also understand the intentionality behind the game's combat design to make you commit to a combo stream, and I can respect that. And every now and then my character would kind of get stuck running forever into a wall, in this clip I'm not pressing anything, but resetting to my last checkpoint always fixed it. The devs already know about this particular issue as I told them as soon as I found it, and they're working on it. These are the types of things that are expected when you have a small team releasing a game day one. These are things that are likely going to be ironed out or are non-essential issues that I have with the game, and none of these things really hindered my experience playing. And in my opinion, no game is absolutely perfect, of course. Even 10s out of 10s can have flaws in my opinion. I hate Jabu Jabu's belly in Ocarina of Time. So what's my final verdict? Before I get this out there, just know that I bought this game with my own money at its introductory price, just so you're aware before you hear me make this claim. But when I left my first play session of Declines, I left a review on Steam saying that it was an honest to god 10 out of 10 experience for me so far. And hours later, I still stand by that. You have to understand that Declines was a game made for people like me. People who grew up with Wario Land and Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy, who can run through Super Mario Bros. with no problem because they've pretty much got that game memorized, who missed college classes because Super Smash Bros. was just too damn fun. This game felt like it was made for me, and to top it all off, Declines entered my life at a very particular time when I needed something like this. It was released basically on the 8 month anniversary of my brother's passing, and these anniversaries have not gotten any easier. The more and more I played this game, the more I stared at the screen and got amazed by every little thing it was doing, the more and more I thought about how much my brother would have loved to play this game too. And that made me smile. And I honestly don't know if I could have chosen a better game to bring out his controller for. That's probably one of the highest honors that I could ever hope to give a game. Declines was a passion project in development for over five years by a very, very small team. And as I explored every nook and cranny of its whimsical levels, I could feel the love that was poured into this game over all of that time. If you are one of those people like the ones I described above, a seasoned Smash Bros veteran or platformer veteran, I think you owe it to yourself to play Declines Drops. I could talk about this game for days, but to be honest, I just want to go back and keep playing it. So if you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble. <laughs>